to a special, special announcement from Road to Awesome. I am so excited to see all of you here and Kip to have you in the room, buddy. It is super great to see you. Thank you for joining me tonight, my friend. You bet. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for asking. Yeah. No, of course. Of course. Uh, as always, I want to start by just reminding everybody the mission of Road to Awesome, which is to cultivate leaders by elevating voices and promoting positivity. That is what we are all about at Road to Awesome. Leadership is such a passion of mine. Seeing people having the opportunity to be elevated, to continue to work, to share their message, and honestly, just to keep lifting people up with some positive energy. I mean, heck, Kip, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, man. Thank it you is. for what you do. Middle school teacher of Woodland Park in beautiful, beautiful, beautiful the mountains of Colorado. I'm so, so happy to have you here. So happy Teacher Appreciation Week, my friend. Thank you, Pep. I appreciate that. It's it's uh, been, a, <coughs> been a year or a couple of years in, in a row, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it certainly has. And, and folks, if, you, if you're not familiar with where Kip, Kip is, he lives in Woodland Park, Colorado, which is right at the foot of um of pike's peak an absolutely breathtaking place and uh, if you've never had an opportunity to see that just google it really quick you'll see two or three pictures and i, I will tell you this kip i flew over there the uh, about two weeks ago i was i was flying to las vegas and you know there are certain areas when you fly over them that there's no question i mean you don't have to like look on the map and go i think i'm zero question it's pike's peak when you fly over there so what what's it like like every morning being, oh, being in Oklahoma as long as you were, what's it like every morning to get up and look out at what you have? Yeah, there I in mean, the sky? Being, being in Oklahoma for 53 years, and we were in Tulsa area primarily and in Oklahoma City too, but we always vacationed up here because it was so beautiful. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when COVID hit, we were kind of like, you know, why wait? Why wait to retire? Let's go. And, and now being here, it's like, I mean, on Monday morning, I woke up and drove to school in, in the snow. I'd never seen snow in May before. Um, <laughs> when I pull into the parking lot, I come around the corner and pull into the parking lot into my into the space at school. You get this majestic view of Pikes Peak and yeah. over, over the pine trees. And it's just, I mean, I stop almost, I mean, several times a week and just think, I really do live here. I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, as Steve Wolf once told me, it does not suck. Um, no, it does not suck. 
<laughs> to, to live here. It's it's just absolutely beautiful, you know, uh, everywhere yeah. you go. So we love it. Yeah. It's just like living our dream. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I was, I don't know, two hours north of you uh, when I was in Grand County. And um, I will tell you that um, of, of all of, and I lived in Wyoming for a long time. I grew up in Wyoming and there's a lot of those majestic views too, you know, and, but I will tell you only once have I had to stop and pull over and just go, you have to be kidding me. And that's there in Colorado, just 30 minutes from, from Kremlin, where I was a superintendent. Uh, inspiration point that overlooks again, you know, just another one of those majestic ranges in the Colorado Rockies, and it just takes your breath away. It's it's truly, it is truly an amazing, amazing sight. So, but we're not here to talk about the Colorado Mountains, and we're not here to talk about snow in May. Although this lady right here, Melissa Wright in uh, New Brunswick, Canada, probably knows a little something about uh, snow in does. May. I'm sure she, I'm sure she does. Melissa, thanks for being there. Uh, and joining us, Melissa is a fellow Road to Awesome author, so I'm kind of tipping my hand here a little bit, Kip, but why are we here tonight? Well, we are here to announce uh, the signing of uh, my contract with Road to Awesome Publishing uh, to publish my new book, and it is going to be to Helen Back, the educator's, an educator's journey to that secret sauce. Um, and again, I that name came, we were talking, remember, maybe a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And you mentioned that that I had I had not just been to Helen back, but been to Helen back more than once. And I never even thought about it like that. Um, and so the next morning when I was getting ready for work in the shower, which is usually when I get my great ideas for whatever reason, I mean, it just hit me. I'm like, that's it. It's to Helen back. And so um, I can, I am just emotionally overjoyed to sign this contract and this has been a a six-year process to find you know the path to this road to awesome uh, to create this book and i'm going to speak it now that's going to be one of many um with you so um i'm just excited to get it finished and get it out there so people can can read it and, and hear my story and and take some good stuff from it you know it's 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 an unbelievably powerful story. And folks, I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you get an opportunity to get this book in your hand, um, you won't want to pass on it. it this, is, this is truly an incredible story. And, you know, we, we all have those, those moments in our life that, that, are, that are challenging for us. And Kip has certainly experienced those. And, and I'm not going to tell those because it's not my place. But I will tell you, when when Kip and I were having the conversation that he that he just referenced, um, I don't even know how we got there, but I said something about that that you had been to Helen back not once but multiple times, and right. and your the perseverance that you have, the intestinal fortitude, the I don't even know what the right word for it is, but just the the you know, damn it, I'm not going to quit, you know that that you have to me is inspiring and it's it's something that you know as I, I mean not even as your publisher as as your friend i've been really blessed to get to know you over the last year or so and finally met you in person last summer yeah but uh it, it's something that i'm just genuinely proud of you and i mean i'm honored that road dawson gets to be a part of this process and that, that we get to you know put you know put our logo on your book but more importantly as, as your friend i'm just Dude, I'm just so damn proud of you, and you are, you're just such a great example and such a, a model of how things are going to, things are going to really, really try damned hard to break us, but if we don't let them break us, then, then, you know, we're, we're going to find our way through it, and I don't know, I, I could just sit here and just say I'm proud of you nonstop, so start talking, because that's all I got, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, you know, I... And I and that means a lot because our you know, and again, you're not just a publisher. Um, you're I consider you a friend, and we talked about that I think last summer when we met, and you know it's almost like family. And so it's just you know I'm grateful and, and honored to be able to do this um, with Road to Awesome. So I wouldn't want anybody else to do it. I was when we were going through the process of, um, you know, and, and I'll throw out there too that um, Pep is also. Um, 
I guess my personal educational coach um, with Brandon Beck. And, um, you know, it's just as we are going through the process of getting to the point to write the book and how to organize it and how to organize my time, um, you know, and all that, it's just your, your help and Brandon's help, um, is really what got me to the point because for six years I've been trying to figure out how do I tell this story? And I've written several manuscripts that have gotten, you know, three, four five chapters in and I've, and I've trashed them because it, it that's not where I wanted to go with it. And, and yeah, it's a story of, of recovery and sobriety and those kind of things. But, you know, I, I really needed to find the, the, that path to that, to my road to awesome, um, for, for this for this story reach educators and you know thanks to your coaching and and, and guidance and friendship you know it, it's gotten there and and once you got me on track man this has really gone I've been able to, to really get after it and and really write the book I want to write so I guess if I could I could go ahead and sign the contract if let's do but, it all right but uh, again I'm just thank you and I am honored to do this and and just Super stoked. So there we go. Ready to go. It's official, man. It yeah. is official. You are an author, brother. I love it. Um, and again, it's just, um, you know, about the book, it's just, it's not just my personal story. And, um, you know, but a little over eight years ago, and which wasn't that long ago, um, I found myself, I was homeless no home. I had lost my car. I was sitting in a rehab uh, facility for addiction and I had lost the right, uh, the, the legal right to, to see, speak or contact any shape, any way, shape or form my children. And the only thing I had left ironically was my teaching license. Um, I mean, that is it. And, you know, I remember, I remember sitting in rehab and, and I learned I lost my, my, my rights to my kids. And so to me, it was a choice of either I was going to leave. I wasn't forced to stay. I was going to leave and just go, go in my life. Um, and in that moment, something clicked in me and, and I was in a chapel on the front row of the chapel there at rehab. And I just said one word, help, as I looked up to the there was a crucifix of, of, uh, or Jesus on a crucifix on the wall. And it's just like instantly something changed and it's, you know, I, I felt a warm sensation. I stood up and it's like, you've got work to do. And, and that is the moment that I think for the first time that I realized that my life was just not all about me. And that's kind of the underlying theme of, of the book. But my, my life is about what I do with it to impact others. And so at that point, I knew that my kids depended upon me and my family needed me. And so it's just I spent every day, one day at a time since then, trying to be one percent better um, to make a difference. And so and through that journey, I've learned, you know, so many lessons about self-love, acceptance, um, that grit and perseverance of never giving up mindset grace um dreaming big so big people call you crazy um and those are some of the ingredients now that i call my secret sauce and i think it's, it's something that every educator has i think every person has that and you know for me this this book is is geared towards the educator because i've seen especially in the last couple of years people think that or as educators, we, we don't have a personal life. You know, we teach, we, we become not only just the teacher, but the, the pseudo parent, um, the counselor, the mentor, um, the cheerleader, the biggest fan. We've, we've become in a lot of ways, everything to our students, which is amazing. But people forget that teachers are real people and they have personal lives and they go through things like addiction and bankruptcy and divorce and, you know, physical, you know, ailments and illnesses and all kinds of loss, just like everybody else. And so, you know, this book really shares 
my stories and how I came upon those ingredients and how you can face any, you, you can face any adversity and turn it into your advantage. Um, and so, you know, I, I hope that that's what the book um, gives to people is that empowerment and that hope that no matter what they're going through as educators, um, they can become that greatest miracle in the world and they can find those ingredients in their own secret sauce that they can again take them to takes you to the next level as an educator to really build those connections and relationships with kids um, and i always knew that i had that gift but i ran from that and so you know for me i learned the hard way but um you know those lessons that i share in the book are have really allowed me to become authentic and real in the classroom and I think that's what it's all about. If you, you know, it's, it, it allows me to actually teach the content better, um, but it allows me to connect in ways that, you know, I still, I still get things from kids, you know, since I've been in recovery and before that um, about the impact I made in their life. And so, you know, it's just uh, a story I can't wait to share with everybody. Um, and, so, and hopefully that will inspire and help them to do the same things that I'm doing um, in our schools because our kids desperately need it. Yeah, without, without question. Um, you know, I've, I've heard you, I've heard you tell the story a bunch. I mean, I think you and I connected a year and a half ago, maybe, and you had sent me an initial draft uh, uh, that was, a little bit of your recovery story um of what you have now compared to where you were then is it's an it's an incredible growth story i mean it really really truly is as a writer um but the stories are so powerful and it's it's something that i've known and and have heard um this this is just so cool i'll share with you in, ju in just a second i, I got to get to a comment that, that just came in it distracted me and there, there's a good reason for it i love it um <coughs> Kip, I think um, what you do and what you stand for is, and I didn't think about this when we scheduled tonight, um, but but here we are in the heart of Teacher Appreciation Week, and I think you captured the heart and the soul of a teacher so well in what you just talked about. Um, teachers are still human beings, and what they what they deal with when they're not in the school is is everything you just shared they're still human beings and they have the same trials and tribulations and victories and celebrations that every other human being does in every other in every other walk of life but sometimes people don't don't see that or they don't think about that or maybe they don't want to think about that that you know our we could have a teacher who is struggling with addiction or struggling with a divorce or struggling financially or whatever the case may be and uh I, I think it's amazing and like you said you know it leads to those stories those incredible moments where somewhere down the road a kid says something to you that you had in class years ago you know or that you reconnect with a student um i'm, I'm dropping a special edition of the the podcast uh tomorrow morning actually just just for teacher appreciation week and, and i shared a couple of stories in there and and i talk in there about how how incredible it is to hear from your former students. And, and I, I've, let, I've made a long lead into this because I saw this, this post come up and I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to address it. Um, this, this comment right here, a uh, young man, J. Bob Fuqua. I will tell you, I have known J. Bob since I was a first year teacher. And to see him on here making a comment um, is, it, it's exactly, Kip, what you and I and every other educator strive for is, is to, to know many years down the road that, that we've made a difference in the life of kids. And um, <laughs> I've, I've got some, some amazing, amazing fun stories about J Bob, including him wrecking a golf cart, which J Bob, I promise I won't tell anybody else. <clears throat> I might tell Kip later, but uh, um, <clears throat> you know, it's about the impact we have on kids and, and, and doing this right here, you know, telling your story is going to help. Um, it's going to help others understand that story, and and it's it's really impactful. And 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 here we have a <clears throat> we have a parent of one of your current kids, and uh, I'll I'll leave that one there for you to talk about. 
Yeah, this kid is, um, I mean, I only had him this year, sixth grader, and um, his name is Lane, <coughs> and uh, he's the president of our Builders Club through the Kiwanis. Um, and again, it's just, you know, I, I've always known, like I said before, that I had this gift to connect, you know, and it's something that I think I ran away from. And, but I, I always thought that that kind of, I always wanted that connection and relationship thing to serve me. And my recovery taught me that, you know, that it's all about me serving others, you know? Um, and so those stories that I've learned, those, those ingredients in my secret sauce, you know, now in Woodland Park, Colorado with kids like Lane, I'm able to go into the classroom and intentionally share those stories and intentionally connect and intentionally build relationships um, where it's not just some hodgepodge, you know, natural thing I was gifted to do with, with no purpose behind it. And, and it's just, you know, it's so amazing now to, to, cause you can really be in the moment and appreciate all those connections and all those small impactful moments that I think before I always used to miss because I was so worried and caught up in all my struggles that, most people didn't even know about, you know, and it's just, you know, I, I did tell my kids this morning that I wanted to give them a shout out because, you know, the book is, is dedicated to them. And so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And when you read it, you know, you'll, you'll get to, you'll get to hear and read those stories about my kids. Um, <clears throat> But I wanted to make sure I, I, I threw that in there. And, um, you know, if, uh, when I was in Oklahoma, my last stint in Sepulpa, um, I got back into coaching soccer. again. You know, soccer has been a big part of my life. Um, played it as a kid and in college and professionally. And um, I'd gotten out of coaching primarily because it cut into my drinking time. And, um, you know, I, and I just was falling apart and I just didn't have any business doing it anymore. And, a friend talked me into getting back into it uh, after I'd been in recovery for a couple of years. And I think I was about three years sober. And the lessons that I was able to, to instill in the culture that I was able to build in, in those soccer programs because of what I went through, um, not only was impactful for the players and the families that I was around, it was so impactful for me. And there was two boys and they were twins, Mason and Nate Sarver. And, um, you know, the, a lot of, a lot of the book goes out to them too. Um, they were, they were two boys that, that are like my own kids to me. And it was the first time that I was able to really <clears throat> get into leaning into my secret sauce and using it to impact kids. And I, I could see it and it was intentional. And that's really when I began to grasp this idea of, the secret sauce and what I'm doing in education and what we're doing as teachers and, and the power of connection and relationship, um, as educators, um, it's just, it's mind blowing, you know, the, the, the impact, you know, that we can have on, on kids' lives, not just in the classroom now and today, but like you said, J Bob, you know, yeah. years, years down the line. Um, right. And it makes it, it makes it all, all worth it. It absolutely does. You know, I think, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the thing that a lot of people who haven't done what you do or that I did don't realize is as educators, we're in the people business. You know, I mean, our, our job is not to teach history or science or math or whatever. I mean, yeah, there's all these metrics out there that, oh, how well did we do with teaching math or science or whatever? That's not what we do. I mean, yes, those are the mediums that we use. I mean, our job is to take a human being that we get in September or August or whatever and help them and guide them to being a little bit better human being in May or June or whatever the case may be. And you don't do it through content. Your content is your medium. You do it through your heart. And you do it yeah. through relationships and, and you've captured that so, so brilliantly tonight. I mean, I think that's, uh, that is the perfect, perfect way to, uh, to jump, jump back to 
it's teacher appreciation week, folks. Here, here's the one thing I would ask you to do. If, if you're listening to this now, if you're watching us live, or if you're watching the recording later on, reach out to some teacher you had somewhere down the line. You've had at least one of those teachers that touched your heart in some way, shape, or form. Just reach out, shoot them a text, shoot them a message on Facebook, however you can get a hold of them. Pick up a phone and call, you know, go old school on them and just tell them, I appreciate you. Thank you, because they make a difference. They really do. And Kip, you make a difference so very much. I'm I'm honored again that, that we get to be a part of this journey and that we get to be a part of your book. So thank you. Congratulations. And welcome to the Road Dawson family, my friend. Thanks for having me. It's, yeah! <laughs> it's freaking pumped, man. Uh, so excited. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm. I am truly, truly fired up for you, and truly fired up for Road Awesome. Uh, this is this is absolutely a uh, a match made with some secret sauce, without question. Yeah. So, folks, we're going to sign off, uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, get out there, have a Road to Awesome week. Teachers, see you, I hear you, I love you, I value you. Keep doing what you do because what you do makes a difference. <laughs>